DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. And you bet your life. Here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. And many of them say the secret word. This uh, moth-eaten duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is food. Scram. <laughs> Out of it, <Edgy. laughs> George, proceed. Well, Groucho, we have a couple of young single people for you tonight. And uh, their names are Miss Barbara Schmidt and Mr. Mario DeRay. So would you come in, please, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Barbara Schmidt and Mario Dore Me uh, A. Uh, which one is Barbara? Oh, I am. That's uh, your Barbara. That's about the silliest question I guess I've ever asked on this show. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Barbara? I'm 18. 18, huh? A lovely age for a girl. In fact, it's a lovely age for a woman of 40. <laughs> Mr. You're not married, are you, Barbara? No, I'm not. You're not. Uh, are you engaged? No. Completely free agent? I'm completely <laughs> unattached. Is that so? Yeah. You mean your zip is broken? <laughs> well, something's holding you together, and I, I wish it was me. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Heaven? Originally, I'm from Albany, New York. Albany, yeah? Uh... Yes. And now I live in Pasadena. Oh. Well, uh, tell me, do you go to school or do you have a job or are you self-sustaining or self-supporting or what? No, I go to school, I go to UCLA, and I'm majoring in English. Oh. Oh, that's pretty good. Can you speak it at all? Uh... <laughs> Why did you come to California to learn English? Don't they uh, speak English in Albany? <laughs> yes, well, I prefer the climate here in California. Oh. You, uh, Mario, is that your name? Mario. Yeah. Mario. You're not Mario Alonzo, are you? No, I'm Mario Dore. Are you related to Mario Lanza? No, but Al Dore is my brother. He's related to Mario Lanza? No, he's my brother. Your brother is Aldo Ray? Yeah. Well, congratulations. You're very lucky. <laughs> now then, who is Aldo Ray? <laughs> he's a movie star. He's a movie star? Oh, movie yeah. star. The only movie star I know is Francis X. Bushman. <laughs> You're a pretty big brute, Mario, aren't you? I'm big, yes. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't play football. Why is it? I do play football. I play for the University of Southern California. I play for the team. You play with USC? That's just what I said. I'm surprised you don't play football. <laughs> <laughs> you hate USC, uh, Bob? I don't hate it. No. But I'm for UCLA. Uh -huh. So am I. <laughs> No, only in the last five minutes. Oh. <laughs> Up to now, I was a fan of Rutgers. Now, uh, Barbara, I imagine life must be interesting for a pretty girl in college. I've never been a pretty girl in college, but uh, I'm only guessing. Now, I wasn't even a pretty girl in high school. <laughs> Does anything exciting ever happen to you, Barbara? The most exciting thing that ever happened to me was I was chosen the 1954 Rose Queen, Pasadena. Oh, you were queen of the roses, yes. then. Oh, that's a very high honor. Congratulations. Thank well, you. Pretty tough competition. Yes, there was quite a bit. Well, enough. Let's get down to brass tacks. We've got enough of this historical stuff. For... Mario, will you marry this girl? No, I can't. You can? I'm going steady right now. Well, call her up and tell her you're going to marry Barbara. <laughs> She'll understand. Women are very understanding that way. <laughs> well, say, your girl must be quite a dish, Mario, if you'll turn down the Rose Queen for her. How did you meet your inner Marata? <laughs> well, I met her about two years ago at a dance, and I liked her, so a couple of weeks later, I asked her out, and that's it. We've been going out ever since. If you were so crazy about it, why did you wait two weeks? Were you saving up a dime for the phone? <laughs> I was busy doing other things. Other things? <laughs> My boy, take it from an old hand in these matters. There are no other things. <laughs> well, 
where is this Dazzler? Is she, is she out front hitting that? Is she no, she, no, she's in Pinole, California. That's about 400 miles north of L.A. And she she's 400 miles from here? Yeah. She's a secretary for the district attorney up there. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> you mean your girl is 400 miles away and you turn down a date with probably the most beautiful girl in America who is standing right next to you? I have to, I guess. <laughs> no choice. You know, that's like living in Las Vegas and going all the way to Cedar Rapids just to play bingo in a church bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're an attractive couple, and Mario, if you're smart, you'll marry this girl as soon as she can support you. <laughs> I forgot to ask you one question. Do you have a fellow? No. Or did I ask you? No, Why you not? Well, I have many fellows. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, let's play you bet you. <laughs> I had a fellow who wanted to meet you. It was me. <laughs> you both know the rules of this swindle? Uh, this game? <laughs> yeah. You selected the musical category. These are all top tunes of the last 20 years. And Fenneman, just keep looking right here. Huh? Okay, now what do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way to 100. 50? 50. 70? 70. 70. 70. 70. Okay, this song is from the score of the musical Knickerbocker Holiday. Now, you give me the title. <laughs> September song. September song. September song is absolutely right. Yeah. And you're off to a good start to have $170. Now, what are you going to take a fling at? Shades of the same flavor. 80 or... Eighty? We'll go eighty. Eighty. Eighty dollars. Sammy Kahn and Julie Stein wrote this song about ten years ago. What's the name of it? Play it. Let it snow, let it snow. That's right. Let it snow is right. <laughs> now I have two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> what are you going to go for now? Ninety. We'll go for 90. 90. This song was a big hit a few years ago. Let's see if you can identify it. Wish You Were Here? Wish You Were Here is right. <laughs> you now have $340. <clears throat> Last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? We'll go $100. $100. This song was written by Rogers and Hammerstein. What is the title of it? Play it, Jack. Hello, young lovers. That's right. Now give him a big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and you wind up with four hundred forty dollars. There goes that girl and the district attorney and everything else. <laughs> well, thanks and good luck from the Minnesota Plymouth dealers. <laughs> Uh, Groucho, we have a man with an unusual occupation for you. He's Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. His partner is a housewife. She's Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common way. It's something you find around the house. Mrs. Mariana Ehrlich and Mr. Vern Lucius Cameron. A couple of pretty fancy monikers there. <laughs> Mariana, where are you from? I am originally from Czechoslovakia, and I came of a friend in Portugal to the United States. You came with a friend from Portugal to the United States? I came with my best friend, my husband. Your best friend is uh -huh. your husband? Uh-huh. Well, that may be true in Czechoslovakia, but... <laughs> Whereabouts behind the Iron Curtain did you come from? Prague, Czechoslovakia. Prague, huh? Mm -hmm. You were poor but Prague at the time? Huh? <laughs> Could you give us some idea of your age, Mariana? I'd rather skip that question. You'd rather skip it? Well, <laughs> skip around here and then get us your age. I heard once Luella Farson said that a girl who tells her age is liable to tell anything. Well, I expect to weigh many other things out of you before we throw it. You're uh, Jules Vine, Lucius Cameron. I huh? was named after Jules Vine. Is that right? Yes, and you're, you're... He was named first, and I was named after. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> where are you from, Vine? I was born in Sioux City, Iowa. Oh, that's Washington. where all the lawyers come from, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know that. Well, the Sioux City, I imagine that's where. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I spent three years in Iowa, three years in Kansas, and then spent most of my boyhood in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. 
what sort of work do you do? Groucho, I'm a hydrologist. You mean you eat only vegetables? No, sir. What's a, well, what a, is a hydrologist hydro is a man who locates, or a woman who locates uh, underground liquids, oil or water. You mean like a bootlegger? <laughs> yes, if they're underground. Well, how do you how do you go about finding water? Well, I have instruments that I developed over a period of 32 years of locating, locating wells. Well, what makes this thing work? It uh, takes on a charge from the electrical aura around the body, and uh, this positive charge causes it to become attracted to the negative charge coming up by reflection from underground water. Well, you lost me quite some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever found any wells for people? Yes, sir, I've located thousands of them. I don't know how many thousands. Well, how, how much do you charge for finding water? A cent a gallon? Or? Well, the price ranges from $25 to $100, uh, $100 per well, or $100 a day flat rate. $100 a day? Yes, sir. Well, you must be finding water because you're certainly soaking somebody. Yeah? That's right. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come to play your bet your life. In the race for the $2,000, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is food. I'm sure you're familiar with this game. I don't have to explain yes, it to you. What's it mean this is a spelling time? quiz. This is an old-fashioned spelling bee. You get only one chance at the correct spelling and only one answer between you. I want you to spell the word and then pronounce it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Spell it and then pronounce it. All right, what do you start with? 10, 20, 50, all the way to 100. 70. 70 suits me. 70 suits me, too. All right, spell the word lieutenant, meaning an officer in military service. L-I-E-U-T-E-N-A-N-T. Right. This kid's from Czechoslovakia, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> you now I have $170. What are you going to go for? 80. 80 is you, okay? Right. Sure. Spell the word alumina, meaning a light silver white metal. Metal. A-L-U-M-I-N. A moment. Aluminum. L-A-L-U-U-M-I-N. N-U-N. That's right. Right. You now have $250. You went to night school, huh? I did. Yeah. I went to night school. And day school, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to spell better than to pronounce. 90. Well, spell the word fictitious, meaning not real, counterfeit, not genuine. F-I-C... T. T. I. T. T. O. U. S. I. O. U. S. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. Well, All right, now, decide one answer between you now. <coughs> what are you going to say? It's I-O-U-S, I'm sure. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. All right, then you spell it. F-I-C-T-I-T-I-O-U-S. Fictitious. That's right, that's right. <laughs> You now have $340. Some illiterate in the front row was hollering you were wrong. <laughs> I trust now, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. What are you going to go for? Hundred. Hundred. Is that all right with you? That's right. Uh, all right. Spell the word penitentiary, meaning a state or federal prison. P P E N I T I T I E N. No. Penitentiary. P E N I. No, P E. Yes, that's right. P E N I. T E N. All right, come on now. P I A R Y. That's right. right. Now spell it. One of you spell it. P E N I T E N T I A R Y. That is right. <laughs> and you went all the way. You wind up with four hundred forty dollars. Well, thanks and good luck to the Soda Plymouth dealers. Thank you so much. We invited some girls who worked for an aircraft plant to our factory tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected June French to be on the show. And her partner is Mr. Albert Hall. So folks, would you come in please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. Albert Hall and uh, June French. June, uh, how old are you? I'm 21. 21, huh? What's your hometown? Mineola, Texas. Mineola, Texas? Is there a town named Mineola? Yes, sir. Where is that near? Oh, it's about 80 miles east of Dallas. You mean, well, how far is that from Neiman Marcus? That is Neiman Marcus. Oh. Are you married? Yes. 
You are? Yes. Well, you're pretty young to be married, aren't you? I've been married six years. You were married when you were 15? Yes. Boy, they catch them early down there, don't they? Huh? No, I caught him early. Oh. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Most women are not. <laughs> Mr. Hall, uh, where are you from? Originally from Kansas. Born in Kansas. <laughs> Farm. Well, you don't get angry about it. Are you? <laughs> it was kind of tough out there. This guy's trying to hypnotize me. Huh? Him any more questions. <laughs> Did you grow up on a farm in Kansas? Did you grow up on a farm back there in Kansas, sir? Uh... No, I left when I was 10 years old. Uh-huh. Your name is Albert Hall? Yes. Well, that's in London. Isn't that where the musicians uh, play in the concerts? Oh, yes. Are you, uh, did you know that? Were you oh, named after that place? Evidently. I, I didn't select the name. Oh. <laughs> Such a soft job up here. Huh? <laughs> the last time I come down here without my blackjack. <laughs> Where did you go when you left the farm? Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> what were you doing there? Well, I went to school there. When I quit school, I got a job on the Nebraska State Journal as a printer's devil. <laughs> Just do it. Will you ask him the next question? <laughs> you were a printer's devil. Well, why did you get fired? Or maybe you weren't the type, huh? I didn't get fired. Oh. Al, are you married? Oh, yes. You are, huh? How long have you been married, Al? Forty-two years. Is your wife out here with you? Yes, she's in the audience. Uh -huh. Oh. Well, what sort of work have you been doing lately? Uh, well, homicide? I came to Seattle, and I got a job on the Seattle You Times. imagine if he doesn't win any money here, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> I'm leaving long before that. <laughs> You say you went to Seattle and you got a job on the paper? Seattle Times in the composing room. I see. <laughs> and how long were you there? <laughs> Fifteen years. Maybe I can out frighten them. <laughs> Boy, would he fit in all of Dickens stories, huh? <laughs> Well, Jim, what kind of work do you do? I'm a messenger. I feel safe on asking you. <laughs> You're a messenger? Well, what do you do as a messenger? Do you deliver messages? No, I deliver blueprints and supplies and food or anything else to put the engineers want. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you said food, so you and Gargantua each get $50. <laughs> All right, all right, beat it, Doc. Now, who do you deliver these things to? To the engineers. Uh-huh. Well, how are you dressed? Uh, do you wear this kind of an outfit? Or? Well, yes, skirts, blouses, sweaters. Uh -huh. You know, better be careful. You know, I know something about engineers. They all have plans of their own, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do these engineers... Charm them. <laughs> Mr. Hall, I am reluctant to do this, but let's get back to you. Uh...
What are you doing in Hollywood and who are you frightening? <laughs> what are you doing here at present, Mr. Hall? Well, things got tough up in the mountains, no money. I came to Hollywood to find out how they make money. <laughs> well, how do they make money? Uh, I walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard, and I come to the conclusion that 50% of them there are on relief. <laughs> The other 40 percent are going around to these banks and loan companies. There's three or four in every box. I think you've got something there. Now, have you decided on the type of work that you'd like to do in Hollywood? What would you like to do, Al, as long as you're out here now? You're not doing anything. Well, what you're doing there looks kind of soft. <laughs> It is, but I don't want it to get around, that's all. Just, uh, I guess the jig is up. <laughs> well, Al, the time is up for loose chatter. Now, let's play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $2,000, the first two couples are tied with $440. Uh, you both understand the rules of the game. Now, you select the geography. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. But if you see. All right. How much? She says 100. 100. Okay. What country is separated by 1,000 miles of the Republic of India? Pakistan. Pakistan is right. Oh. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. You now have $200. Now, just so that we don't have any confusion, on the next questions, consult before you answer, because he might have said something else, and, and you wouldn't have won the money. All right, what are you going to go for now? $90. $90. Now, one answer. What great river is sacred to the Hindus? It empties into the Bay of Bengal. Ganges. Ganges is right. <laughs> All right, you now have $290. Uh, hey, you're pretty lucky to have a gal like that, wouldn't oh, you? Ain't I always been lucky all my life, Groucho. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Al. Now, what are you going to go for? 80. Yeah. Yeah, that's 80. The city of Buffalo, New York, is located on which of the Great Lakes? Erie. Lake Erie is right. What happened to that talk I gave you? You now have $370. Now, I, what are you going to go for? Yeah. This is your last chance to beat the other couple. Sure. $70. Yeah. $70. What is the largest city in Finland? It is also the capital. Now, one answer. Talk it over first. Yes, Helsinki? That's right. Helsinki. <laughs> and you'll wind up with $440. And that means that all three I of our couples tonight... I get everybody married in this show if they're married or not. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> that means that all three of our couples tonight, in just one minute, will get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Everybody tie. <laughs> Groucho, here are the three couples all tied for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. We've given them little slips of paper. They'll write down one answer between them, and uh, if they all get it right, we'll uh, split the money among all of them. For $2,000, what was the name of the famous English jurist whose commentaries are fundamental in any study of English law? What are the answers? Mr. DeRay? Barbara Schmidt and Mario Doray's answer is nothing. June French and Al Hall's answer is nothing. Mariana Ehrlich and Vine Cameron's answer is also nothing. This one has got Hoyle, but that's wrong. It's Sir William Blackstone, a very famous man <coughs> in the history of jurisprudence. I'm sorry you all lost. That means the big question next week will be worth $2,500 
Well, they lost the big money, but they all did pretty well in the, well in the quiz, didn't they, George? Yes, all the way. Each. How much did they each win? Each couple won $440. Well, congratulations to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight and to both of you and to everybody else. Okay.